Hey guys, and welcome to the Dota 2 how-to guide for playing Broodmother. This is a quick guide to give an overview of skills, some item suggestions, and skill build along with general tips on how to play Brood. Broodmother is a great hero who can work well in a variety of roles and can happily mid and solo lane. She's a great pusher hero and can tear down towers with ease and is really scary in certain 1v1 situations. Brood starts with 17 Strength, 18 Agi, and 18 Int, and gains 2.5, 2.2, and 2 respectively. Meaning that for an Agi based hero she gains more Strength so will be fairly survivable, though she has very low starting stats all around and is very squishy and easy to kill early game. Brood's Q is Spawn Spiderlings. This ability can be targeted on both heroes and creep and can even be cast to deny allied creep. With a cast range of 700 and dealing damage between 75 and 300, it's a fairly strong nuke early game, though it is fairly mana intensive at a cost of 120 mana with a cooldown of 10 seconds. But this ability is better suited to casting on creep, as if the target dies within 2 seconds of being hit, it will spawn spiderlings, with the number of spiderlings ranging from 1 to 4. Any targets killed by the spiderlings will also spawn smaller spiders, again called spiderites. This is where Broodmother's huge pushing capability comes from, as with max rank of this skill you can easily build up a small army of spiders and melt through towers. Spiderlings can also be used to block enemy heroes as they do have collision and will force them into bad positions at times, so you can kind of trap people and hold them in places. Though be careful as spiderlings do give gold when killed, so avoid feeding them to the enemy team. Brood's W is spin web and will literally place a web on the map. This web will not disappear over time. The ability has a cast range of 600 and the web itself has a radius of 650, and this is what makes Brood survivable solo lane and a very competent mid hero, as while on the web, Brood gains an additional move speed and additional health regen, with the move speed ranging from 20 to 35% and the regen ranging from 2 to 8. This is a huge early game boost to regen and makes Brood very survivable. But a bigger benefit of it is that after 2 seconds fade time, Brood will become invisible on the web, provided she doesn't attack. And while this is easily countered by wards, it allows for a lot of early game harass opportunities. Brood is however limited to 2 to 8 webs on the map, and placing more will simply remove the oldest web. This ability has a cooldown of 30 seconds and a mana cost of only 50, and will also grant vision in a radius of 150 around the center of the web. It will also destroy trees when placed, and it makes it a hugely useful utility spell. Brood's E is Incapacitating Bite. This is a passive that is a unique attack modifier, meaning that Brood cannot benefit from other UAMs such as Eye of Scardi or anything like that, despite the fact that this passive is blocked by BKB, which kinda makes it a little bad in my opinion. Incapacitating Bite will, though, on targets without magic immunity, provide a 30-60% to miss chance and a 10-40% to move speed slow for a duration of 2 seconds. This easily allows for Brood to chase down and kill squishies and makes her fairly effective at countering carries who don't have an MKB or BKB, which really does force the enemy carry to get one of these two items or even both, which may make their build less effective against the rest of your team, which can be great. Her ultimate is Insatiable Hunger. This provides Brood with a huge 60 to 100 bonus damage, along with providing 40 to 80% lifesteal for a duration of 14 seconds. This lifesteal fully stacks with lifesteal from Vlad, so Brood can potentially lifesteal 96% of damage done, meaning that she heals almost as much as she hurts. This ability costs 100 mana and has a cooldown of 45 seconds, so can be used fairly often to provide devastating fighting power. Items wise, starting out with a stout shield, two ironwood branches, salve, tangos, and a clarity is a great sort of starting base item set. Moving on to a soul ring as quickly as you can to be able to spawn spiderlings a lot more, followed up by power treads, orchid malevolence, and BKB. 
This gives her a lot of damage, a silence to stop people escaping, and BKB provides so much needed sort of survivability for Brood. Moving on from that, some great items are Monkey King Bar, Butterfly, and Abyssal Blade, as it allows you to get an early stun off with the Abyssal Blade cast and really stun lock down a target beyond that. Other good items can be Mana Style, Assault Curus, or even Heaven's Halberd, because again, Heaven's Halberd provides additional survivability, provides a way to stop them attacking, and it provides evasion, so it's a great item. Skills wise, taking spawn spidlings at 2, 3, 5, and 7, with spin web at 1, 4, 6, and 8, and incapacitating bite at 10, 12, 13, and 14. With your alt at 9, 11, and 16, and stats when you have to. The reason for this build is that spawn spidlings is your highest damage and farming skill, and taking web at level 1 provides you a lot of survivability. So getting those two maxed out first is really kind of key. Now, the reason why you've delayed your ult is because the web and spawn spidlings are a lot more beneficial to you. So delaying the ult isn't that much of a big issue. Now, playing Brood is actually pretty fun, and as a solo lane hero, you're going to want to, of course, block creep as much as possible and then place webs covering the entrance to side shop and expanding back a little for added safety. This is of course if you are alone in lane. You should be moving into last hit and harass, and if you are being pressured back a lot, just use your Q to last hit instead, and make sure you're in XP range. And then micro all of the spiderlings to get additional last hits, and that it's kind of like a fun mini game, really. Micro the spiderlings everywhere. Spidlings will be invisible on your web if they're not attacking as well, so it's, it's all good. Brood isn't the best ganker though, but she excels at killing when someone comes to gank, so work with your other lanes to make sure they come up to you to get ganked. One of the great benefits of Brood is that because she is very good at making sure she can get kills, well... You're going to be against the enemy carry as a solo lane hero, so if you can actually coordinate with your team well and get them to come up for ganks, you can shut down enemy carries very efficiently as a brood mother. Moving on into mid game though, you're going to want to start farming as much as possible, using your spiderlings to really help your team push down towers quickly to get a massive gold advantage. Pushing towers and farming is your biggest concern mid lane, and Brood can farm so fast that it's ridiculous. Later though, in team fights, you're great for stopping the enemy carry with your mischance and slows. This is why you need a lot of farm, because you need those items to give you stun lockdown and mischance and slows. Now, really you do want to eat the tasty carry, because the tasty carries, you know, he's been getting fed, so he's all like fat and plump and juicy and a super tasty carry. No one wants to eat scrawny supports anymore. But be, well, in between fights, you're going to want to push towers as much as possible, making sure you take towers down all the time and really kind of harassing their base. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this short brood mother guide and found some useful info here. If you have, please remember to leave a like and favorite, and if you have anything to say about the guide or the hero, just leave a comment.